Oh, so, so. It's so that good. Okay, so we're moving to our second talk this afternoon. Uh, the speaker is Frank Polman from Munich, and he's going to tell us about Gaussian symmetry protected topological phenomena. Okay, good. Um, thanks. And uh, also, thanks to the organizers for putting together this nice program and for uh, giving the opportunity to, for me to, to speak here. So, so, so I'm actually very happy about uh, Nathan's talk because he already um, showed that there are interesting uh, phenomena that we find in uh, symmetry protected topological phases. And what I want to show is that several of these phenomena can also survive even though the phase itself uh, is, is trivial. So, so basically I want to show that certain topological phenomena, uh, including edge modes and even topological phase transition can occur in trivial phases. So, so, so on the work that I'm uh, presenting has been done uh, in collaboration with uh, Ruben Beresen, who was a student in my group in Munich, and uh, Julian Bibo, who currently still is a student in my, my group. So, so, so let me start slowly, and I start basically uh, um, reiterating a few things that uh, Nathan already pointed out. So I basically want to discuss um, or introduce the concept of, of, of different quantum phases and then show how we understand or distinguish different symmetry protected topological phases. So, so first of all, this is very general, but, but, but if we just talk about a, a gapped quantum phase of matter, well, we first of all talk about zero temperature and, and we say that two Hamiltonians are in the same phase if uh, there exists the path of, of gapped uh, Hamiltonians connecting them. Right? So in, in a, in a picture, we would say that, well, we have now two Hamiltonian H0 and H1, and we can now tune along some path uh, um, um, given by, by um, alpha, and, and, and the gap remains open, so we can just do this without encountering any um, phase transition. Then we would say that these are in the same phase, and if there is um, an avoidable gap closing, then we would say that these are uh, two different phases, right? So, of course, we might accidentally run across the phase transition, but then we can find a different path, which, which is uh, a gap then we're in the same phase, but, but if it's impossible to find any, any, any path without um, closing the gap or without encountering any kind of uh, discontinuity, then, then we would say these are different phases of matter. So, and uh, the kind of one of the prime examples for, for different topological phases is the, the so-called um, Haldane phase. And while conventionally we find the Haldane phase in, in the spin one Heisenberg chain, um, um, equivalently, we can also think of a, a dimerized spin one half chain. Uh, and the spin one half chain or the dimerized spin one half chain also has an uh, SO3 symmetry where SZ2 cross Z2 is a subgroup of the symmetry, time reversal symmetry, translation symmetry. So there is a bunch of symmetries in, 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 in this Hamiltonian as I'm, as I'm showing here. And now as we tune the parameter um, delta in this case, we find that this system does undergo a, a phase transition at uh, delta equals to zero. Right? So, so clearly the um, translation variant uh, Heisenberg chain is, is critical. So, so, so that's the critical point. And then we find that um, left and right of this critical point, there are two gapped phases. So, and, and these gapped phases um, cannot be distinguished by symmetry breaking, but instead they can be um, distinguished in terms of so-called symmetry fractionization. And this is something that Nathan already um, talked about, but let me just elaborate a little bit about how we can distinguish these two phases uh, um, and how, 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 how basically we can derive a topological invariant or label the two different phases. So, 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 so we know that the um, uh, Hamiltonian is gapped, and we find now a symmetric ground state. And if you find a ground state, which is now symmetric under certain symmetry operations, um, abstractly speaking, this could be just uh, G and H, but in practice, this could be, for example, um, global like spin rotations that are rotate all the spins by pi about the x axis or z axis, um, um, you name it. Right? So, so, so have now a certain symmetry group under which the um, ground state and also the Hamiltonian is uh, symmetric. And now what we are doing is we just now take a segment 
of, of our ground state and we apply the symmetry operation to it. Since it's a symmetry operation, it wouldn't change the, the bulk, right? Because by definition, if, if, if we just apply the symmetry operation to the state, it's invariant under the symmetry operation. However, it can act non-trivially on, uh, on the edges. And what we can then do is we can then say that, well, let us now represent the symmetry acting on the entire state in terms of uh, operations acting only at the edges. And, and, and the assumption that we make now is that the symmetry acts we were to say, trivially on, on the bike. So we would say that inside like the, the, the local degrees of freedom uh, uh, have, a, have a linear representation of the, of the symmetry. If you stick to the example of, uh, of spin rotations, we would say that uh, we can have like an integer spin rotation, right? So an integer spin rotation is, uh, um, if we just take the, 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 the algebra, that's a, that's a linear representation of the, of, of, for example, SO3. The boundaries in this case, however, might be a projective representation. So a projective representation is then a, um, a linear representation modulo some phase factor. And in particular, sticking to the example of spin rotations, the, um, the boundary might transform in terms of a half integer spin, right? So, so, and so and this gives us now uh, a way how we can classify the different projective representations. So we say that, well, we have now a certain symmetry group for a symmetry group, we can have certain different projective representations which are classified by sure multipliers or by the second group cohomology. And then I can now classify, I can now just steal the labels that are used for classifying different projective representations. And I can label uh, different symmetry protected topological phases with it. So, so now we can apply exactly this to the um, aforementioned Holdane model. So, so we have now here our uh, dimerized um, Heisenberg chain, and we had, as this is the same phase diagram that I showed before. So we have the critical point where the model is a translation invariant Heisenberg model, uh, which is gapless. And then we have these two gapped phases. And if you now look at it, if we just look at the uh, left-hand side, we find that, well, at the, at the boundaries, we have singlets and the singlets transform uh, trivially under the symmetry. So, so, so these are S equals to zero state at the boundary. So, 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 so this would be uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the phase factor is, is, is zero. So, so Rx and Ry uh, commute, right? So, so this is what we would say is now a trivial phase. And if we just take the other side of the phase transition, here we have the um, spin one half degrees of freedom uh, localized at the edge, right? If you just take the extreme limit of dimerization, that's pretty clear that we have here just a single spin one half and um, the, the Z2 cross Z2 or like the Z2 rotations about like pi rotations about the X or uh, Y axis, they're just represented in terms of the poly matrices, the poly matrices anti-commute. So we find that here the uh, phase is, is pi. So, so, so now we have two different labels and these labels cannot change uh, unless we cross uh, a phase transition. So, and with these um, different labels or with the um, non-trivial representation of the symmetry in terms of the edges, we get certain uh, topological phenomena. In particular, um, based on these commutation relations, we can directly deduce that we will have uh, degenerate edge modes and also if we just look at the entanglement spectrum of the system, we find that there are necessarily uh, um, um, degeneracies. Good. So, so far we have now uh, hopefully somewhat clean definition of what we mean by, the, uh, by an SBT phase. So now I want to just do the next step and I want to just destroy it. So, so let us now say that we have a Hamiltonian realizing a certain SBT phase. How can I trivialize it? By trivializing, I mean, that I just can connect it to a, a trivial state without uh, having to undergo a phase transition. The way, I mean, one way, one obvious way is that we just um, break the symmetry. So let's say we take this Z2 cross Z2 model and we apply a staggered field to this, then the system becomes trivial and all these nice features, including um, the, the edge modes or, or degeneracies are immediately lifted, right? Even if I apply a really tiny um, field, the edge modes are, are lifted and, uh, and, and, and all these nice property go out of the window. And if I look at this phase diagram and I just apply a staggered 
magnetic field, uh, then I would also find that there's no longer a phase transition. Right? So, so the gap will be will get small, but we wouldn't hit an actual phase transition. So this is option number one. But there's another option, which is maybe less obvious. So we can also extend the symmetry group. And if we extend the symmetry group, we can again find a path connecting the topological phase to the trivial phase. Um, but the question is, if, if, we do, if we are doing this, to which extent do certain features that we learned from, about, um, from the topological phase or certain how do, to which extent do certain topological phenomena actually survive? And, and this is what I want to uh, discuss in, in the following. So I want to discuss it by, by considering a very uh, concrete model. And let me just walk you through the, the, the Hamiltonian. So, so I'm considering now a um, Hubbard model. And, uh, um, and so I have just a, a Hubbard model where we have now um, hopping between uh, neighboring sites. But then on top of this, we have a staggered chemical potential. So the, so, so, so the chemical potential is, is, um, is alternating. So on, on even sites, say, it's, uh, it's, it's lower than on, on odd sites. And uh, 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 that's it, basically, right? So we have just a staggered chemical potential. Uh, and then we have uh, a dimerized, dim uh, dimerized um, hopping. So we allow the, 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 the hopping between neighboring sites to be de-dimerized. So we on, say on, 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 on even and odd bonds, we have a diff different um, hopping strength. And at lastly, we have the on-site Hubbard interaction. So, so, so what I want to do now is I want to look at the phase diagram of, of this model. And I want to focus first on, on a special limiting case. Let us now first consider the case where U, the Hubbard interaction is, 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 is very large. If the Hubbard interaction is very large, we can apply perturbation theory and we do get exactly the Hamiltonian that we had before, right? So basically if U is infinitely large, the, the, the top of this phase diagram is exactly described by the Heisenberg Hamiltonian with the dimerized uh, exchange interactions, right? So, 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 so for U infinity, we exactly have the model that we had before. And so we know in the limit of U being infinity that there is a phase transition between an SBT phase and a, a trivial phase. So, but now if we just plot the entire phase diagram, which we evaluated here using uh, DMRG, and it has also been evaluated by others um, before, what we actually find is that now, if we just lower U sufficiently, that in that case, there is uh, a path without actually crossing the um, phase transition. So, so there's a question in the chat, um, whether we can consider this extending of the symmetry as a central extension of the group. Um, maybe hold on for a bit. I'm, I'm getting into the detail what we actually mean by uh, extending the symmetry. So, 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 so now basically, if we are considering now this, this, this full model, model, we see that there is now a path that we can adiabatically connect them, right? So it's uh, easiest to see even without doing numerics is we just start from the fully dimerized limits. Uh, and, and, and that we can, can see how we can reduce U to the non-interacting uh, limit. And once we are in the non-interacting limit, this is basically just an uh, SSH chain in the presence of a staggered chemical potential. And then we can actually directly show that there is a path where we never close the gap, right? So, so, so now what we have shown that, that there is actually a path between what used to be the SPT phase to what used to be the trivial phase. So, so, it's, uh, so, so we have now actually trivialized the, the SBT phase by basically extending the, the symmetry. And, and what basically happens in terms of the, the symmetry is that the um, Hubbard model has an uh, SU2 symmetry, which in the limit of U goes to infinity becomes basically the quotient group of uh, SU2 and the, uh, uh, the fermion parity symmetry. So, so we have SU2 mod the fermion parity. Right? So, so basically if U is infinitely large, then the, then the, the parity symmetry uh, P becomes just a number, which is, is then uh, uh, say, say minus one for, for each side and, uh, and that's it. And if we have SU2, for SU2, we know that there are no non-trivial uh, projective representations. So the uh, H2 of SU2 over U1 is, is equals to zero. 
while uh, H2 of SO3 uh, is actually um, equal to uh, Z2. So we get these two, two phases. So, so, so what we basically um, um, have shown that is that the um, Holden phase can be trivialized by adding uh, charge um, the fluctuations of the charge degrees of freedom. So, so yes. Right. So, 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 so the way I mean, I'm talking about um, um, half filling, as you say. I mean, so basically, if I just define my Hubbard interaction this way, this ensures that the ground state is always at at half filling. Yes. Okay, another question in the chat. Does color density show the parameter phi? Uh, no, no, no. Um, thanks for this question. So, so, so the 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 quantization of phi to having phi either zero or pi. This only exists. This distinction only distinct. This distinction only exists for 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 u being infinitely large for any finite u. This 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 is no longer um, well defined as I'm, I'm showing in a in a in, in a moment. But let me just come to this. So the 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 color coding is really just um, uh, to make it look nice. So there's no no meaning to having these colors. Just should show that we can go without a discontinuity from one to the other phase. This is all 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 this means. Good. So so. So, so, but now we see that there is a path where we can go from one phase to the other without crossing a phase transition, but we still, we see that there is still a phase transition um, um, here. So in particular, we see that if we go down to a certain U, what, what happened is we just have now um, the, um, the phase transition. So this is a um, C equals to, 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 to one critical point as we go here down to some UC2, and if we just go below the C2 and above UC1, then there is actually a, a first order transition um, um, between those two phases. So, but I'm commenting on what's going to happen or how we can explain this uh, in, a, in a moment. So, so let, my, let me now first discuss the um, stability of, of the edge modes. In particular, what we find is that the edge modes that we have for uh, delta larger than, than zero. So, so the, these um, um, topologically protected um, edge modes, they are actually robust um, up to a certain, certain point in, in this phase diagram. So basically, if we look at the ground state um, degeneracy, we find that there is actually a, a fourfold degeneracy, ground state degeneracy um, all the way down to this uh, dashed blue line. And at this dashed blue line, we have a, not a bike transition, but a boundary transition to another uh, state where, where, the, where, the, where this feature, namely this twofold degeneracy, um, disappears. And the way that we can um, understand it is that if we just look now how the symmetry acts on the, on the boundary states that we find for the full Hubbard model, the uh, relation is that um, um, Rx times Ry is equal to the fermion parity uh, times R, Ry. Uh, times times rx in the limit of u goes to infinity the fermion parity is, is frozen to, to to minus one and we get the rx times ry is equal to minus ry times rx but but the eigenvalue of of pl cannot um, change immediately so we have a, a gap protecting um, this this quantity and thus we find that the property of having the um, edge modes is actually uh, so, so, so robust for a certain range of, of U. Uh, a fairly easy way of, of seeing this is that if you just go to the completely decoupled limit, if you go to the limit where delta is equals to one, so here we just have uh, um, yeah, completely, like a completely decoupled spin on, 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 on this side. And in this, you see that there is a, a level crossing um, exactly at U equals to, to delta, right? So, and, and if we now plot the low energy, uh, the ground state and the low energy excitations of, of the full model for a finite delta. So, so now we are here at this, uh, this dashed line. What we see is that there is now this level crossing. So for sufficiently large U, we find that there is a fourfold uh, ground, a fourfold 
um, ground state um, degeneracy. And we can now identify the different ground states by having either uh, um, kind of on the first and the last side. And this is what this indicates. They're both are up, both are down. One is up, one is down, or the one is down, or the other one is up. And, and then if we, if we um, cross below this, then there is this um, kind of level crossing at, um, of these boundary states. And we see that the, the um, unique ground state is given where um, both, where both uh, uh, um, spins here are localized at the, at the left boundary, right? So, 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 so just to, to, to conclude, so, so, so basically here we have some, some cartoon state, which is a state that we would, that this, that this is a state that we would get for, for an, um, an infinite kind of uh, um, 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 staggered field, yes? Yes. No, 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 no. If we have, um, if you look at the Hamiltonian, we have um, the staggered uh -huh. potential. So this is very important because if we don't have this, if we don't have this, this delta, I mean, if we don't have this delta, then we basically have here some uh, SSH chains. And then we know that then, then there are actually different topological phases. And in that case, even if, 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 if we, if we if we wouldn't if we would set delta to zero, we have uh, actually two distinct topological phases in terms of inversions or like lattice inversion symmetry. Yes. You you say that it's clear that at some point there should be. Yes, exactly. So, so this UC two is an I. So this is this has been looked at before. I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like what 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 has been looked at before is this this line this line of of, of delta equals to zero. This one has been looked at, and it's known that there is this extended uh, critical regime. Yes. But what we are just now basically arguing is that we are just transferring this to this SP exactly. So 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 just basically to just put these things together, saying that well, in the limit of u infinity, that we do have SPTs for u equals to zero, we don't have SPTs, and now we are just putting this together. And and one of the non-trivial statements, at least which wasn't obvious to me in the beginning, was that um, that in, in fact the edge modes are robust, right? So we just find. That this this property of of these edge modes is is even is is, is that these are, are protected for a finite range of, of parameters. Yes. What 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 do you mean? No 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 the, the, no no it's just uh, the same. So 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 in fact. This would like, maybe what you're referring to would be the case when delta is zero. If your delta is zero, then you would have an SPT. Uh, sorry, then you would have, um, and then you have um, uh, a Zushi for Hega model with fractional charges. But 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 we prevent this from happening by having this uh, this ionic Hubbard model. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So why is it double on the left and the Oh, this is because of the staggered chemical potential. So if you just if you just were to make this staggered potential very large, then you find that the ground state is is the one that the doublon is on on the right, on the left. Sorry. The the like uh, like you mean here on the right hand side, on the left hand side, it, it it terminates at the, at the Ising transition. Kind 
and models. I probably I don't I don't know any allergic. I mean, this is basically just reading off the the results from 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 the numerics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And 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 this argument, which which I just gave now for the uh, um, degeneracy of of the ground states, we can di directly apply also to the degeneracy of the entanglement spectrum. In particular, what we can do is we can now think of an um, infinite chain which we cut at a given bond, and we just do a bipartition into uh, subsystem A, everything left of this bond, and subsystem B, everything right of that bond. And we can then look at the um, spectrum of the reduced density matrix, and we find that um, that there is again a, a phase transition where odd, there basically the low energy states are of the of the entanglement spectrum, or equivalently, the dominant eigenvectors of the reduced density matrix um, either have a half integer or integer. Um, um, spin. And then this is, I think, also a, at least intuitive, uh, a nice understanding because in the limit of large U, there are no charge fluctuations, and the entanglement spectrum either is only integer or only half integer. So we would find that either all energy states are degenerate or all of them are, are non degenerate necessarily. So, and, um, and if, we, if we allow charge fluctuations, then half, like a half integers can, can hop between the left and the right. And by this, the uh, entanglement spectrum um, starts to, to mix. And then there is again, just at a certain um, value of, 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 of U, then there is a, a crossing of the integer and half integer um, levels. So as, as shown here. So, so, so what I've um, shown so far is that uh, the, despite that those two phases can be now adiabatically connected, that the edge modes remain robust over a certain range of, of parameters. So now coming to the um, um, uh, phase transition. So the phase transition between the um, trivial and the FBT phase then does not immediately gap out after extending the uh, symmetry group. And in particular, there are a few steps that I just want to, to mention here. So first of all, there is a duality symmetry um, between delta and, and minus delta such that we know that if there is a, if there is a, a direct transition between the two phases, it, it always has to be at, at delta equals to zero. And we can see this duality symmetry from some modified uh, translations where we just have now some um, symmetry um, D acting now on a, our uh, um, uh, um, annihilation operators, which is in minus one um, um, to the power of N times um, Cn, right? So recall that the regular translations are no longer a symmetry because of the, the staggered field, but these modified translations are then a, a still a, a, a symmetry of, of, of the model. And based on this, we can also uh, deduce that based on these uh, modified translations, that in the limit of, of u goes to infinity, that we, we, we have a guaranteed uh, leap schultz mattis um, theorem, which guarantees a, a phase transition at delta equals to zero. And in particular, what we, what we use is that, um, that in, in this case, we have an on-site projective representation of the spin rotations, right? So, so, so for the translation invariant case, we have uh, one spin per unit cell, and then we find that on each side, the Rx and Ry anti-commute and thus, we, we can just immediately apply the deep schultz mattis um, theorem. However, we can also uh, extend this argument to, to finite U. In particular, if we have um, finite U, we actually find an emergent deep schultz mattis um, theorem, which, uh, which, which enforces um, the stability of, the, of this critical line um, further down of this um, um, phase transition. And let me just, briefly argue how we, um, how we can come to, to this um, conclusion. So, 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 so I just pointed out, sorry, let me just come back. So I pointed out if U goes to infinity and if we don't have any um, charge fluctuations, that then um, parity is, is fixed to, 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 to minus one. So we can just replace it by a number. And that's why we find that, they, uh, that we have this um, on-site projective representation. So now we argue, however, that the fermion parity string um, has a, a long range order as long as a fermionic um, um, parity operator is, is gapped. In particular, 
if we now calculate um, a, a sort of a string order um, um, uh, parameter where we just apply parity to a consecutive number of, 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 of spins, we find that this scales as some constant um, um, smaller than one and larger than zero times uh, e to the theta times the um, n minus m, right? So, so something which uh, alternates. And this um, theta can either be, be um, zero or, or pi, right? So let's recall in the limit of, of u infinity, uh, p is minus one. And then we find that uh, um, theta has to be pi because it's uh, plus or minus one for even odd length of, of strings. So, so, and if we have theta equals to pi, this implies now some emergent anomaly that forbids a, a, a unique and gapped ground state. So we can, for this emergent analogy, we can show that uh, by contradiction that we, if we assume a unique and gapped ground state, that we are running into a contradiction by assuming that we have a, a pi here. And thus we can then prove that if, if we have this emergent anomaly, that, they are, that, that this yields a, a liebscholz mattis um, theory. And, and, and now there's basically two ways out of this. Um, so there are two ways out of the system for uh, um, uh, um, 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 kind of changing the, the fermion parity. It's either that the fermion parity gap closes or it spontaneously breaks a, a symmetry which uh, destroys the, the, these modified uh, translation symmetry. And in our case, the, the system opts for the second option. So it uh, spontaneously breaks the symmetry. And this is happening along, uh, well, this is in this plot hard to see between uh, UC1 and uh, UC2. So and, uh, what, we, what we actually do, we are now plotting here uh, um, uh, at along this, this line, we, we plot the, uh, the, the um, string order, um, like we just plot what we're going to design string order, which, which are, uh, um, 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 which, which, which differentiate between those two cases. So if the string order S plus is non-zero, it tells us that a theta is zero. And if the S minus is non-zero, it tells us that we are in this pi phase. And we see that indeed at this regime, where you break the symmetry, like this coexistence region where this um, theta is no longer well defined, we see that this is uh, changing, right? So, so we see that this is this is the part where where the um, 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 where the um, Fermi parity is 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 changing, and this is where our Liebscholz mattis theorem uh, no longer holds, and we can actually have uh, uh, um, we can have a continuous path without crossing a, a phase transition. So, so, and this, I, the, the, these ideas now I explained in detail for this model or for this anionic um, Hubbard model, but exactly the same ideas uh, generalize to, to general SBT models. So the recipe is that um, we can say that, well, let us now pick some SBT phase protected by a phase uh, G, and then we can now extending the group G to a larger group uh, G tilde, such that uh, G is, uh, uh, G mod H, and then we can uh, um, find that the um, that quantum numbers of this additional symmetry, which in in, in our case that we just looked at was was fermion parity, uh, uh, those um, symmetry group then labels distinct representation and edge modes and remain edge modes and also transition remain robust as long as the excitations are charged that are charged under under H are are gapped. So so it's a very general recipe that applies to um, that we can just use for for all SBT phases basically and and the same concept that we had here for for one dimensions where the SBT phases are classified by the second cohomology um, we can also just do this to higher symmetries for example we can take a, a z2 two-dimensional SBT and extend it to z4 which is trivial and then uh, um, again trivialize an SBT phase for for two dimensions and just the couple of days ago or, or a week ago, there was actually a paper by uh, Drew Potter and, and, and Wen, and it's not Shaogang Wen, I think, <laughs> but, um, and, and, uh, and they actually showed that the same idea also allow to, to, to find so-called quotient, protect, uh, quotient um, protected um, symmetry enriched um, phases, right? So, 
So, so the same ideas I extend to, to, to a number of different cases. So, so let me just very briefly now um, show a case where, where we just have a realization of this SPT phase using exactly a, a Hubbard model of, of this type. And this was uh, done together with a group of uh, Emmanuel Bloch, where they this amazing, amazing uh, tools to, to actually uh, design uh, now Fermi Hubbard letters. So, so, so they have digital mirrors so that they can specifically design um, lattices such, such that, for example, the, this, this, um, this letter and then depending on, on how we basically dimerize the, 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 the model, they can now either tune into a, uh, uh, into a SPT phase or they can tune into a trivial phase, right? So, so, so basically using the setup, they can now exactly model this, this phase diagram that we are looking at, um, at before. And here we limit ourselves to the limit of, of sufficiently large U so that we are deep in the, um, um, in this regime of an SPT phase, and then they can, using um, uh, using quantum gas microscopy, they can actually uh, directly measure, for example, non-local order parameters. They can measure string order parameters to distinguish different SPT phases. So, so the way that this can be done, because the string order is uh, in um, um, for the spin rotations in Z direction, so they can just measure in the Z basis, and then by doing many, many snapshots, they can just directly measure the, the string order and the string order then uh, can distinguish the two different topological phases, right? So we can design a string order which should be non-zero in the trivial phase. We can design a, uh, a string order that should be non-zero in the other phase. So we can just really tailor make uh, the string orders to detect the different phases and then they can now be measured in, in their setup. And also they can directly um, see the edge modes that are present in the, in the non-trivial phase um, in um, using these um, um, quantum gas mic mic microscopy. So, so this was just a, a short interlude. And now before I'm, I'm concluding, I want to show one other way how we can uh, uh, like use this idea of, of gapping out, out, out symmetries in particular, if we take now uh, chains of that have a Zn cross Zn symmetry, then the low energy symmetry uh, can show is a, a quotient group, which can stabilize actually direct uh, trans, um, continuous transitions where we naively might not have expected them. And let me just briefly show the, the, the main idea. And the main idea is that you know, this demonstrates this for, the, for a Z4 cross Z4 model, where we can, for the Z4 cross Z4, we, we have four different uh, topological phases uh, as opposed to the two that we had for Z2 cross Z2. And, and, and we can now write down sort of toy Hamiltonians, which, we, which was, was done uh, by the work by Tzu and Al. Uh, so so you, these are generalizations of the, of the Z2 cross Z2 cluster model to, to higher um, groups of Zn cross Zn. And, uh, and, and, and this D is now labeling the phase. So, so, so for D equals to zero, this would be in the trivial phase. For D equals to one, it's in SPT phase one and SPT phase two and three, depending on how we choose a D in this, this Hamiltonian. So this is nice to play around with. And the symmetry generators are now the products of X's um, 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 where the product is over um, sublattice A and sublattice B. And what was known before, and this is the work by Tzu and others, is that there are actually direct transitions between neighboring SPT phases. So if you have a SPT phase D and uh, D plus one, then there's in between a phase transition with um, a continuous phase transition with uh, C equals to two. And what wasn't really understood is what happens if you now have transitions between phases which are not neighboring, right? Like, let's see that you have a transition between HD and uh, D plus one. And what you can actually show using the formalism that are just, uh, discussed that there is actually indeed uh, one direct transition between those two with uh, C equals two, two, to one. And the basic idea is similar, very similar to what we just discussed before. So H2 conserves now local um, Z2 symmetry generated by X squared and the symmetry flux has long range order. So we have these um, string order parameters that we can design and the low energy subspace 
is actually uh, Z2 cross Z2. So we see that in the projected to the low energy subspace, the model reduces to a simple M cluster state model. And it's impossible to enter intermediate SBT phases as long as we have this um, long range order, which is protected by a, a gap. And then what we actually find is that there is now not a fine tuned critical point, but again, a regime where we have this sequence to one critical point, which is an end, which, which, which is an um, ending again in a spontaneous symmetry broken phase. So, so the same idea that I discussed in some detail for the ionic Hubbard model also applies to these ZN cross ZN. And in this case, we can actually use it to argue that there should be uh, direct continuous phase transitions between SBT phases, which are not neighboring phases in, in this context. So, so let me now come to the um, conclusion. So, so there are different ways of trivializing SBT phases. We can break the symmetries, which immediately throws all the nice properties out of the window, or we can extend the symmetry. And if we just extending the symmetry group as shown, for example, for the ionic Hubbard model, then we actually find that certain features such as the uh, edge modes and, and also the critical point uh, will survive for, um, for, 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 for a certain range of, of parameters. And, and this has, I think, quite some experimental relevance because the, if, even if you are thinking about a simple spin model in a real material, it's probably realized in terms of uh, some, uh, some effective low energy model for a Hubbard model. And, and now what it basically tells us that that certain of these features are relatively robust, so which makes it more likely to actually observe it. And, uh, and the, the second part is um, about the transitions. And the work, as I said, I want to again thank Ruben and Julian for this nice collaboration. The first part is already published, and the second part about the ZN cross ZN is currently uh, in, in preparation. So, so uh, with this, I want to conclude, and, and thank you for your attention. So thank you, Frank, for this nice talk and for keeping time. Uh, we have time for a few questions. Yeah. So thank you. When you when you build the the projective symmetry for the for considering this uh, edge state that you have, so you enlarge the symmetry group uh -huh. of your chain. Yes. And you build this projective symmetry group, right? Well, no, first, I mean, we have, we, we start off with a symmetry, in this case, SO3. Yeah. Where we have projective representation. So yes. we have basically a projective representation with uh, zero and, and pi. So, but, and and now, now we enlarge it. So we just go from SO3 to SU2. SU2. And in this case, SU2 has no non trivial projective representations. I mean, SU2 have even number uh, dimensional representations. So you are going. Um, no, but we don't have projective representations. So. so my question is out of what you build the projective group? You have an original point group uh -huh. or some group, right? That's yeah, like, like your you system. And then you, out of the original group, you build the projective symmetry group. Right. right. Maybe this is the answer to you. So, 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 so let us say that you have an SBT phase protected by some group G. Uh -huh. That could be Z2 cross Z2, for example. Okay. And now what you're doing is you're just extending the group to a larger group, but you're extending in such a way that the original group G is your G tilde mod H. Yeah, I, I understand and that then, part. Okay, maybe then yeah, I- Yeah, so my question is, so for instance, at the beginning, you had this SO3 group, yes. right? Then you enlarge it. Yes. And you get the SU2. Yes. Okay, so the SO3 has, you know, all the number dimensional representations. So they correspond to integer angular momentum, if you want. Mm -hmm. The SU2 is the uh, symmetry group of the half integer angular momentum. Mm -hmm. And then it has even uh, dimensional representation. This is where you get double degeneracy. Yes. Yeah, sure. So my question is, in that case, when you go from SO3 to SU2, that means that your system, which originally has an integer angular momentum, now has a half integer angular momentum. My question is, which is the source of that half uh, angular momentum um, that you are adding to the original one? Uh, the source that we get this I mean, for this Hubbard model is that we just add fermion parity into the game. 
Uh, but maybe we can talk in, in, in private uh, with me. I'm still not 100% sure I understand the question correctly. Uh, Frank, I think there's a question from the, ah, okay. in the chat. Uh, any other question from the room? This is, how can we deduce the Hubbard parameter value U, which corresponds to the most stable phase? Uh, well, I mean, the the phase is not stable. I mean, the, the, one of the points I want to make is that it's not a stable phase anymore. Like the, the phase itself is, is trivial. So we can, without closing a gap, we can just go from the, what used to be the SBT phase to a trivial phase. So, so it's not a, not a phase anymore. If you're asking about what, what is the U for which the topological phenomena are most robust, it would be that U is infinity. Because if U infinity, we have, a, we have an actual SBT phase. So, so maybe this answers your question. I don't know. Is this the only question? Yeah, I mean the others. I. Oh wait, yes, right. So the others I already answered um, on the yes, on the way. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so it's just a question about the dimensionality. So here you're talking about one D systems. So do these ideas somehow generalize to say two D? I mean, can yes. you still um, like weaken the classification of two D topological phases by enlarging local? Right, so we're actually on the right slide, right? So, so, so the same concept you can generalize to to higher dimensions. For example, you can take a two D SPT, which is then um, classified by by um, uh, uh, by a third cohomology. And then you can just start from Z two, where you have a non-trivial third cohomology, and you can extend it to Z four and make it trivial. So, so the same idea applies also to higher dimensions, and as shown by this paper by Drew Potter. Also, you can apply this to symmetry and rich topological phases. Okay, so since there are no more questions, let's thank Frank again.